This video will cover the removal, installation, and timing of a Bosch VE injection pump on a 1982 Volvo 240 diesel D24. With experience, this can be completed in a day. If unfamiliar with the process, this may take several days. Several special tools will be required to complete this task. They will be specified during the video and listed in the description. Start by disconnecting the cooling hoses from the cold start device on the front of the pump, using hose clamp pliers to minimize spill. Remove the throttle spool from the top of the injection pump by removing its three mounting screws and disconnecting the throttle linkage. Disconnect the 12 volt lead to the pump solenoid. Remove the timing gear cover via its two screws, one being behind the injection pump and the other behind the cylinder head. Disconnect the fuel delivery and return lines from the pump. Remove the vacuum pump from the cylinder head via the two nuts on the top and bottom of the pump. Using a 17mm injection line wrench, disconnect the fuel delivery pipes from the pump and injectors. Use special tools wrench 5199 and wrench 5201 to remove the camshaft sprocket and timing belt. To do this, insert the two posts on tool 5199 into the two holes on the camshaft sprocket. Place offset wrench 5201 onto the sprocket nut and a half inch ratchet to the end of the wrench. Loosen the nut with wrench 5201 while simultaneously applying pressure in the opposite direction with wrench 5199. Remove the screw, washer, camshaft sprocket, and timing belt from the engine. Rotate the injection pump sprocket with wrench 5199 or by hand so that the V-notch in the sprocket lines up with the mark on the injection pump mounting bracket. Secure the sprocket in this position with stop 5193. Place wrench 5201 with attached ratchet onto the sprocket nut so that you can loosen and remove the nut and washer. Use puller 5204 to remove the sprocket from the mounting bracket. To do this, loosen but do not remove the center screw of the puller. Line up the two posts of the puller with the two holes on the sprocket. Insert and twist to prevent it from falling off. Use wrench 5201 to tighten the screw on puller 5204 until the sprocket comes loose from the bracket. Seated on the pump screw, you will find a small woodruff key. Remove this and do not lose this key as it is necessary to secure the sprocket to the pump. Remove the pump from its mounting bracket via the four mounting points. Two are visible on the driver's side of the pump. One of them is on the front of the pump, but be careful not to lose the nut on the back from that screw. And the fourth is a 6mm Allen key tucked in between the engine and the pump. You will need to use an extension arm in between your Allen key and ratchet to access that screw. Once all of the screws have been loosened, remove your injection pump from the engine. After removal, I sent my injection pump to D24 expert Tom Bryant in Maine for a full rebuild. A link to his website is in the video description. The reinstallation and timing of the pump, as described in this video, will differ slightly from the directives given in the official Volvo Green Book, but they were recommended procedures as described to me from Mr. Tom Bryant. Disconnect the fan shroud from the radiator via the two screws at the top of the radiator. Disconnect and remove your battery. Loosen the four screws securing the battery tray to the engine bay and remove. Use hose clamp pliers to restrict coolant flow on the reservoir, upper, and lower radiator hoses. Place a collector under your engine to prevent coolant spillage onto the ground. Loosen the clamps and remove the coolant hoses from the radiator. Remove the two brackets on the top of the radiator. Remove your radiator by pulling vertically out of the engine bay. Remove the fan shroud from the engine bay and remove the fan via the four screws securing it to the block. I swapped my direct fan for a tropical fan clutch, so mine is held in place by four nuts and is missing the stock spacer. Remove the camshaft cover via the 14 nuts securing it to the head and remove the old gasket. To reinstall your pump, loosen but do not remove the five screws securing the mounting bracket to the engine. I did this with the pump on the engine, but it is definitely easier with the pump removed. If you are doing this with the pump on the bracket, two of the screws are located on the passenger side of the pump, one is located below the pump attached to the oil dipstick, and the other two are located in front of the pump. Reseat your injection pump onto the mounting bracket and ensure that the V-groove on the pump is set slightly clockwise of the V-groove on the mounting bracket, as seen from the front of the engine. 
Fully tighten the pump to the bracket by the mounting screws. There is no need to readjust the pump from here on out. Reinstall your wood roof key onto the pump and reseat the pump sprocket. The sprocket has a notch which will allow proper orientation with the wood roof key. Rotate the sprocket so that you can insert stop 5193 into the sprocket and bracket. Reinstall your washer and nut. Use offset wrench 5201 connected to a torque wrench and tighten to 33 foot-pounds. The wrenches should be perpendicular to one another so as to ensure proper torque. Remove stop 5193 and turn the sprocket until the V-groove is just slightly counterclockwise of the mark on the mounting bracket, as seen from the front of the engine. Reseat the camshaft sprocket, screw, and washer by hand. Do not fully tighten. At this moment, you want the sprocket to freely rotate without moving the camshaft. Install your timing belt by lifting the pump to create slack. Ideally, you want the belt to be snug, but under little to no tension. The Volvo Green Book calls for the use of belt tension gauge 5197, but this tool is extremely rare and I could not find one. To test, use hand pressure to determine the appropriate amount of play. Move the pump up and down until desired tension is achieved and tighten the mounting bracket screws. As you tighten the mounting screws, the tension will likely increase. So you will need to do some back and forth trial by error to achieve the best results. I found it easiest to initially set the belt looser than desired, and then upon tightening the bracket, it would fall into the appropriate tension range. Use wrench 5199 secured to the cam sprocket to rotate the injection pump, so that it is approaching number one injection, which will be indicated by lining up the V-groove on the sprocket with the mark on the mounting bracket. At this point, make sure that your cold start device is disconnected. To do this, loosen the screw facing the front of the engine and rotate the sleeve 90 degrees. Do not turn the screw closest to the firewall, as this will require the cold start device to be reset on a test bench. Unscrew and remove the plug and washer from the center of the injection pump distributor. Install holder 5194 and dial indicator. Push the dial indicator in or out to achieve a reading between 0.1 and 0.8. Your small dial should read more than one, but it is not necessary to monitor the small dial after this initial setting. Use wrench 5199 secured to the cam sprocket to rotate the injection pump counterclockwise until a minimum reading is achieved. You will know when the minimum reading is reached because the dial will stop and then reverse its direction of movement. Once you have confirmed the minimum reading, set your dial to zero by rotating the outer ring of the dial indicator. Make sure that your dial never goes below the zero mark from here on out. Connect a 27mm socket wrench or tool 5188 to the vibration damper center bolt and rotate the engine until top dead center, also known as TDC, is achieved. You will know that you have reached TDC by two indicators. First, both cylinder 1 cams will be obliquely pointed upwards. If they are obliquely pointed downwards, your engine timing is 180 degrees off and the engine will not run properly. Second, the zero mark on the flywheel will line up the arrow mark on the bell housing. It is a good idea to mark this spot with some white or similarly bright paint to make it more visible during timing. Once you have determined TDC, use tool 5188 to rotate the engine 20 degrees counterclockwise to remove slack in the belts. Not doing so will result in inaccurate timing. Now rotate the engine via tool 5188 clockwise so that the zero mark once again lines up with the bell housing arrow. Make sure that you do not overshoot the mark. If you do, you will need to rotate counterclockwise past the zero by 20 degrees, and then clockwise until the marks align or you are just slightly shy of the zero. Rotate wrench 5199 clockwise on the cam sprocket to set the ejection pump timing so that your dial indicator reads 0.85 millimeters. I set mine to 0.87 millimeters as the reading often decreases after torquing the camshaft sprocket. Use wrench 5201 to snugly tighten the sprocket to the camshaft. You do not want the sprocket to be fully tightened, but you do want it to move with the camshaft. Use tool 5188 attached to the vibration damper to rotate the engine counterclockwise until the dial indicator reads the minimum, which should be zero. If it does not read zero, it will likely only be off by a hair. If that is the case, rotate the outer ring of the dial until it does read zero. Now rotate the engine clockwise with tool 5188 
so that the zero mark on the flywheel once again lines up with the arrow on the bell housing. If your dial indicator reads between 0.85mm and 0.9mm, your timing is good. If it does not, loosen the cam sprocket, determine the minimum reading of the pump, set the pump between 0.85mm and 0.9mm, and repeat. Once you have achieved the correct timing, hold the camshaft sprocket with tool 5199, attach offset wrench 5201 and ratchet to the back of the nut, and torque to 73 foot-pounds. Again, the wrench and ratchet must be perpendicular to each other to obtain a correct torque reading. Remove your dial indicator and holder and replace the screw and washer into the pump distributor. Reconnect your cold start device by rotating the sleeve back 90 degrees and tightening the screw facing the front of the engine. Reconnect your fuel delivery pipes, torquing them to 18 foot-pounds. Fill your injection pump with diesel fuel or an appropriate diesel additive. For this, I'm using Hot Shots EDT. Reconnect your fuel delivery and return lines to the pump. At this point, it may be a good idea to replace all of the braided fuel lines with new hoses. Check the O-ring on the vacuum pump and replace if necessary. My O-ring wasn't a perfect fit, so I used some grease to keep it in place. Resecure the vacuum pump and plunger to the engine head. Attach the 12-volt lead to the injection pump solenoid, reconnect your throttle spool, and reconnect the coolant hoses to the cold start device. Place a new valve cover gasket onto the head. I prefer using a solid one-piece gasket such as this, made by GOATS, because all of the four-piece cork gaskets I have used leak oil onto the intake manifold. Reconnect the valve cover gasket by tightening every third nut until all nuts are tight, so as to not warp the gasket. If needed, replace your fuel filter by unscrewing the old one and attaching your new filter. Make sure that you pre-fill your new filter with diesel and that you coat the gasket with diesel fuel. Reconnect the timing belt cover. Reconnect your fan. Replace your fan shroud. Reseat your radiator and tighten the brackets on the top. Screw the fan shroud to the radiator. Reconnect your coolant hoses, disconnect the hose clamp pliers, and refill your cooling system. For this, I'm using Xerox G05. Reseat your battery tray and connect your battery. Now double check your engine bay and make sure that everything is where it should be and that you did not leave any tools in the engine, such as stop 5193 in the pump sprocket, which can damage your engine if still present when trying to start. If all clear, start your engine and you're all done. Enjoy your Volvo 240.